What's up guys? I'm Ashley Jenkins and today Warner Brothers has revealed the first gameplay from Monolith's upcoming return to the Lord of the Rings universe in Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor. In the game, you will take on the role of a ranger, Talion, who was killed along with everyone else guarding the Black Gate by Sauron and his Black Captains. Unlike everyone else, you're kept back from the afterlife and you return as a half-human, half-wraith with the ability to step into the wraith world just as certain hobbits have done while wearing the One Ring. This particular ability will give you some unique advantages in battle, like being able to identify your main opponents and shadow stepping to teleport to your enemies. Wraith abilities will also allow you to twist the minds of enemies instead of slaughtering all of them if you choose. You can force them to act on your behalf, spying on your enemies or attempting to assassinate their leaders. And that opens up new missions for you too. There are also those enemies who get away from you, who escape, and who remember how to hold a serious grudge, becoming your own personal nemesis. Or nemeses, I guess, if you make a habit of letting dudes escape. They'll even retain the physical scars you've given them, like burn marks across their face if you stuck their head in a fire or something. The gameplay and combat both lean heavily on the open world, allowing you to traverse it to avoid or get the drop on your opponents, and using the world to your advantage will get you farther than barging into a fortress of enemies blind. The game doesn't have a release date yet, but it is expected sometime this year on PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. Next, Tomb Raider developer Crystal Dynamics has gone into detail on just how they're making Tomb Raider Definitive Edition Next Gen for its upcoming release on PS4 and Xbox One. Improvements to the game, which originally launched early last year for PC, PS3, and Xbox 360, include a fully remodeled Lara Croft with new textures and materials, support for Tress FX hair physics, which allows each strand of hair to react individually to the environment, new dynamic skin lighting effects like subsurface light scattering, and physics simulation for her equipment so it jostled around in reaction to her movements and feels like a realistic part of the world. Interestingly, it appears that the PS4 version of the game will run at 60 frames per second in 1080p, and while the Xbox One version will also sport 1080p resolution, the frame rate on that platform will be closer to 30 frames per second, though it may jump as high as 45 during certain parts of the game. Publisher Square Enix doesn't believe the difference in frame rate will affect the gameplay experience in any way. They say, Delivering the core Tomb Raider gameplay at native 1080p and running at 30fps was always our primary goal given the type of experience Tomb Raider is and the exploration we want players to do. Anything beyond 30fps for this version is gravy. Tomb Raider Definitive Edition will release on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 on January 28th. And last but not least, today Bethesda has revealed the voice cast for The Elder Scrolls Online and even if you're not an MMO player, it's hard not to be impressed. Wonder Woman herself, Linda Carter, will reprise her Skyrim role as Azura, Daedric Princess of Dusk and Dawn, and John Cleese, who previously took a turn as your butler in Fable 3 and is also known for that Money Python thing probably no one has heard of, will play a madman named Cadwell, who has no fear, not even of Daedric royalty. Harry Potter's Albus Dumbledore, Michael Gambon, will be the Prophet, a blind man who guides you, the player, in retrieving your lost soul because I guess you forgot where you put it? And Mass Effect's own Jennifer Hale will voice a Nord half-giant named Lyris Titanborn, who also helps you in that quest. Bill Nighy from pretty much everything British ever will voice a merchant prince whose success has put him on the throne, and Underworld's Kate Beckinsale will join him as royalty, playing Iron, Queen of the High Elves, and leader of the Aldmeri Dominion. Spider-Man 2's Doc Ock Alfred Molina is a politically-minded old wizard named Admiral Tharn, who leads the Empire's Elder Council, and stepping into the role of main antagonist is none other than a Clockwork Orange's Malcolm McDowell, who will voice Daedric Prince Molag Bal, who wants to pull all of Tamriel into his dominion. The Elder Scrolls Online will release on April 4th for PC and sometime in June for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And that is the news for today. Does 30 frames per second versus 60 frames per second matter to you when you're basking in 1080p? Let us know in the comments below. Then check out roosterteeth.com for a new episode of The Patch to see what we think of the latest news.